Welcome in to Texans Today. I'm your host, Jeremy Chuggs. Coming up, the top free agents the Texans should sign this offseason. And I'm only looking at Texans free agents. Yes, I'm looking at the Texans free agents for 2024 and who they should sign and who maybe they should, they should let walk. But before we get started, we are inching closer to 8 thousand subscriber folks currently sitting at 7,174 help me get there do it for Matt Schaub or maybe not do it for me but subscribe if you want daily Texans videos on the latest news and rumors 24 7 all year long we are the fastest growing Texans channel on YouTube so join the wave and let's get started with our 2024 free agents ranked last on my list uh, I'm going with Jerry Hughes I mean Yes, he's been good with the Texans, but I think it's time. I mean, I don't I don't really know what else he can bring for the team. We already have Will Anderson doing fantastic this season. Jonathan Grenard, also a younger defensive end. I think Jerry Hughes, for his years with the Texans, I mean, I salute you, Hughes. You played well, but you're on the wrong side of 30. You're only getting older, and this season, it we've ramped back, ramped back your production. So, Jerry Hughes, last on my list of free agents that the Texans should re-sign. Next up, Cameron Johnston. I mean, he's pretty good. Um, I mean, he's a punter, though. If you want to sign him to a one-year deal, fine, but it's not like he's the best punter in the NFL. He's not the worst punter in the NFL. He's pretty good. But, I mean, when it comes down to punters, I think it's not a high-priority signing, in my opinion. Cameron Johnston, next on my list for 2024 free agents the Texans should re-sign. Next up. Derek Barnett, somebody the Texans just claimed off of waivers is a free agent this offseason. Now, don't get me wrong. If he wants to come back on like a vet men deal or a really team-friendly deal, I wouldn't mind it. But is there a priority for the Texans? No, not really. I mean, you look at his stats this year, three tackles, no sacks, one tackle for loss. He had some snaps against the Denver Broncos this past week, but mostly on special teams. So, And it's not like he's going to be a special team standout for you either. So Derek Barnett, even though the Texans claimed him, and I think they made the right move in claiming him. I mean, not really any risk here. You get a guy who played decently for the Eagles in spots and somebody who you can maybe use in a playoff run as a rotation guy. But Derek Barnett going into next season, I really don't think he should be a high priority. Going up next on my list for 2024 free agents, it's Hassan Ridgeway, the defensive tackle. Now, I was pretty excited whenever he first signed with the Texans, but has not produced at all this year. You look at his stats, six tackles, rest of his numbers, goose egg. So the former Texas Longhorn, shout out to UT for making the CFP. Um, I really don't think he's a high priority, but maybe he does get resigned because I do think defensive tackle is going to be the highest positional need for the Texans this offseason, whether that be getting somebody in the draft or free agency. That's my biggest need for the Houston Texans this offseason. But this is not Jeremy sports, folks. It's chat sports. So I want to hear from you, the viewer, our very coveted viewers at home. Let me know what you think down in the comment section. This is going to be the pinned comment. So YouTube loves to throw a little YouTube ad break in there right here. It's okay. Go down and let me know. What is the biggest position of need the Texans have this offseason? Next up on my list, Eric Murray, a safety. He's been hurt throughout this season, you know, much like a lot of the Texans secondary has been. But, I mean, another guy who's been a rotation guy, a special teams guy, has played in spots when they needed him. Hasn't played bad necessarily, but another guy who I don't think the Texans are really upset if he leaves. I don't think anybody's, you know, crying if they don't see Eric Murray re-signed by the Texans this offseason. He's played well, good in spurts, but Eric Murray, not as high as a lot of people on my list for 2024 free agents. This one might be a surprise, but... Next up on the list is Tavier Thomas. Doesn't crack the top 10 for me. And it's because Desmond King's outplayed him so far. And I mean, coming into this season, everybody was like, sleeper, Tavier Thomas, highly ranked by PFF for nickel corners. Well, PFF sucks sometimes. And Tavier Thomas, last week against the Jags, was not good. And this past week, zero defensive snaps since they re-signed Desmond King and put him at the nickel. So you're having a guy who's not going to start at you for start for you at nickel, I mean, 
Are you going to invest a lot of money in him? No. You're probably going to let him walk. So Tavier Thomas doesn't crack the top 10 on my list. And so does this next player, who might surprise you, Denzel Perryman, a starter. But... I don't really think the Texans need to re-sign him. I mean, you have two young guys in Christian Harris and Henry Toto that I think can carry the mantle and play very well. Denzel Perryman, you know, has played well for the Texans. He starts at the middle linebacker spot. But I think the plan is next year, Henry Toto is going to step into that spot. So I don't think really Denzel Perryman is going to be a high-profile re-signing for the Texans. Now, does he return maybe on a team-friendly deal? I could see that, but I almost... Hope he gets a shot somewhere else so Henry Toe, Toe, Christian Harris, and the rest of this linebacking core can kind of step up and prove what they've got. My next guy on the list is George Fant, guy who's been starting at right tackle for most of the year for the Houston Texans, the older guy on this offensive line group. George Fant has played pretty decently, you know, 12 games played, only one sack allowed. But I think George Fant, you know, these, as these guys getting older and older, he might be a guy that the Texans re-signed to a one- or two-year deal, but not cracking my top ten. Not a priority, in my opinion. We'll get to my top ten guys the Texans need to re-sign this offseason. But first, hey, before Christmas time gets here, it's almost Hanukkah. A couple days away from Hanukkah. Go get your C.J. Stroud jersey right now. Available at chatsports.com slash Stroud. Our friends at Fanatics are giving you great deals for the holiday season. And why not get the best quarterback in the league's jersey right now with C.J. Stroud. Yeah, I'm telling you right now, you don't want to wait. You don't want to be the guy on December 24th or the day before Hanukkah. I'm really, I'm really bad. I can't remember what. Maybe it's December 7th. The day before Hanukkah. You don't want to be that guy who's like, Shit, I did not get a present. Go get it right now. Go get a C.J. Stroud jersey for your loved one, for your best friend, for your baby. Whoever you care about in this world, get them a C.J. Stroud jersey, and I promise you they'll love it. And do it with our friends at Fanatics. Just go to chatsports.com slash Stroud and go get that today. It'll That link will be available to you in the comments and description of today's video. Now for the top 10 free agents, the Texans should sign, re-sign this offseason. Devin Singletary. Um, I said it in my video yesterday. The Texans need to go back to having Devin Singletary be the RB1. Because I'm telling you, this year, whenever he has started at running back, this Texans offense has looked miles better than Damian Pierce. Nothing against Damian Pierce. I think he's a decent back, but I'm just, maybe it's the scheme fit. Devin Singletary plays much better with C.J. Stroud than Damian Pierce. I think Devin Singletary, if you're able to get him back for a couple years, I wouldn't mind it because against the Bengals, he looked like one of the best running backs in the entire NFL. He really, really showed out against them and the Cardinals. So Devin Singletary, my 10th player, I would re-sign if I'm the Houston Texans. Next up on the list, Noah Brown, a wide receiver. And I know everybody's saying, Texans, they should get a wide receiver in the first round of this year's draft, which I don't necessarily disagree with. But if you have somebody else, if you're trying to go best player available, if you have a cornerback or another d defensive player, or somebody, maybe an offensive lineman who you really fall in love with, I wouldn't m mind re-signing Noah Brown because you still have Nico Collins, Tank Dell, rest up, buddy. You're, he's going to be back next year. So Noah Brown, I like what he brings to this team. His only downfall is he's been injured a lot this year. But when he's played, he's had two games where he's absolutely gone off. So Noah Brown making my top 10 of te uh, Texans free agents who they should re-sign. Next up on the list, Kaimi Fairbairn. We've all seen what's happened with Kaimi Fairbairn out these past four games. Um, and I think it's safe to say I would really love for the Texans to re-sign this guy out of UCLA. I mean, this year, maybe one of the best kickers in the NFL. 18 for 19, 14 for 14, perfect on extra points. Kaimi Fairbairn has made a difference when he's been in the game for the Houston Texans. These past four weeks have been a little bit brutal. Maybe the Texans are higher up in the standings if they have Kaimi Fairbairn. I think he gets re-signed this, uh, this offseason to the Houston Texans. I would book that. Next up on the list, and maybe an unpopular opinion, maybe a little bit too high for some of y'all, but I'm going Josh Jones, the offensive tackle, and I'm telling you this right now. This is the reason why. Whenever he's played for the Houston Texans, he's played well. And you're saying, you know, Jeremy, he's not going to start for the Texans. He's not a starter. But if you're able to get this guy, there's not a lot of offensive line depth in the NFL, and that's partly why I have him so high, because if you can have a good backup, 
That means the world in the NFL. You look at really the best teams in the NFL, one of them, the Philadelphia Eagles. What do they have a lot of good depth at? It's on the offensive line. So if you can have somebody who can step in, and he's played guard and he's played tackle. If you can have a guy who you're like, I feel comfortable plugging and playing Josh Jones, I think it's a win-win. And he's only 26 years old. So why not re-sign Josh Jones, the kid who went to Houston just like Tank Dell? I would bring him back. I think I would make it a priority to say, hey, Josh, we love your fit here. Didn't work out in Arizona. That's why we traded for you this offseason because we like your fit here with the Texans. You may not start, but we might bring him in in goal line situations. If an offensive guard or tackle gets hurt, which Houston Texans, we've seen a lot of that this season. So it's always good to have some backup plans in the chamber. So Josh Jones, my seventh guy who I would re-sign for the Houston Texans. Next up, I'm going with Dalton Schultz. He's played very well this season, at times looking like a top 10 tight end, and I think his connection with C.J. Stroud has been awesome. We've seen Brevin Jordan step up the past few weeks, but in this league, it's always good to have two sure-handed tight ends, and I think Dalton Schultz can be one of those. Maybe uh, he asks for too much money in his next contract, but... I don't know. I think we'll. I think we roll the dice. We maybe give Dalton Schultz a two or three year extension. I like his fit with the Houston Texans, and I think you know underrated. But I like what Dalton Schultz is. And before we go to this chip, I actually want to ask them a quick question before we go to the top ten or my top five. Before we go to my top five, I want to ask you a quick question. Out of everyone you've seen today, and maybe the next five guys I bring up, I want to. I want to hear from you in the comments. Who do the Texans need to re-sign this offseason? You can give me one name. You can give me multiple names. Let me know what you think down below. Who do the Texans need to re-sign? Who are you like, we can't let that guy go. We can't let him go to another team because he means that much to this team. Let me know who that is down in the comment section. Now going to my top five. At number five, I have Sheldon Rankins, the defensive tackle. He's been the best defensive tackle for this team throughout the whole year. I really like where Sheldon Rankins is. And I know I said earlier, defensive tackle was the biggest need for the Texans at this moment. And it is. And him being your best defensive tackle isn't necessarily the best thing. But since he is, I say you still bring him back. Bring him back on a two, three-year deal because he has played very well. He had that big game against the Bengals. Probably helped the Texans beat the Bengals in that game. So if I'm the Houston Texans, I'm looking at I'm saying, hey, I'm going to get more defensive tackle help, but I'm also going to bring back Sheldon Rankins because he played pretty well for this team this year. My next guy on the list, number four, Steven Nelson, cornerback. In the absence of Derek Stingley, who Derek Stingley has popped off since he's gone come back from injury, Steven Nelson was the CB1, and he's been very good. He locked up George Pickens up against the Steelers, has been matching up against wide receiver ones for the other team, He's played very, very well. 46 tackles, three interceptions, nine pass breakups for Steven Nelson out of Oregon State. I wouldn't mind re-signing him. I know he's a little bit of an older guy, but still, I think he's played his best ball with the Houston Texans out of his entire career. So why not re-sign him to a two, three-year deal? Maybe you draft another cornerback, kind of groom him under Steven Nelson to kind of take his spot eventually. But Steven Nelson, I would bring him back based on his play this year. Next guy on the list. Jonathan Grenard. I mean, he has been in a contract year, and it shows. Leading the team in sacks with eight sacks on the year. Jonathan Grenard has played fantastic opposite Will Anderson. And that's why partly I had Jerry Hughes as my first guy on the list. Because I would much rather the Texans re-sign Jonathan Grenard, keep that Grenard-Anderson pass rush. I think both of them together for the next three to four years can do something special. I think you can see what the Eagles, what the 49ers are doing with multiple pass rushes. I think Grenard and Anderson can kind of turn into that. So that's why he's three on my list. I would really, really love if the Texans could somehow extend Grenard maybe four or five years. I think he's really good. I think he's that special. He's in his early 20s, so why not? Why, re why not re-sign the guy who has played well? He's had his injury issues a little bit up and down, but this year has played fantastic. Number two on my list is Blake Cashman, and he might, have, might, he might be the best Texans defensive player this entire season. 84 tackles, two sacks, nine tackles for loss. And it doesn't say it on there, but I know he's had quite a bit of interceptions on the season as well. If you could look that up for me really quick, Chip. But, I mean, Blake Cashman, he's been the leader on your defense. He's been the best player on your defense, the captain, the 
impromptu captain with all the injuries happening, the suspension to Denzel Perriman, he has stepped up and played out of this world. One, one interception on the year, one interception on the year for Blake Cashman, multiple pass breakups as well. Blake Cashman, he's good as a run stuffer. He's really good in coverage. I love Blake Cashman and his game. That's why he's number two on my list of top Texans to re-sign. Number one, drum roll. It's John Weeks, long snapper for the Texans. Maybe a little bit of a joke at number one, but hey, he's a Texans legend. Come on, it's John Weeks. He's been with the team since I was in diapers probably. John Weeks is a mainstay for the Texans. You can't let go of a long snapper, John Weeks. I mean, when's the last time you said, oh man, this Texans long snapper's not doing his job? Because he always does his job. It's John Weeks season, baby. That's why he's number one on my list. Maybe a little bit of a joke. I had to put him on there. Gotta show some love to John Weeks. How much, how much love does John Weeks get? Not a lot. And this is also a little test I wanted to do to see how many people made it to the end of the video. So if you made it to this point right now, if you're watching right now, go down and type Weeks down in the comment section so I know who the real ones are. I wanna know who made it to the very end of the video. So if you did, go down and type Weeks. Also, if you did, follow me on Twitter maybe, at Jeremy Chugs. Got Texans news and rumors going on there. Also the dankest memes on the internet. So go follow me at Jeremy Chugs. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel today. YouTube.com slash Texans TV for all your Texans content needs.